Hey everybody, hey Chris everybody. and Tony back for another review from Give Love a, Lady Brewing Company. Give us a hug. Come on. Come <laughs> on for, for a hug. Well, uh, for, for the viewers. Good to see you again. We are back at Love Lady Brewing We're Company huggers. here at 20 uh, Water We're Street in 20 Henderson. 20 South Water Street, yes. In Henderson, Nevada, part of the Water, District, Water Street District. Wait, I gotta try this. Spin it like a basketball. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, uh, on the, yeah okay. On your, okay, I see what you're doing. Yeah. Now that, Don't ever try that again, please. <laughs> but, uh, Let's um, start over. No, just kidding. No. Uh, <laughs> Love Lady Brewing, as we said, is here at 20 South Water Street, here yes. in the Water Street District of yes. Henderson, Nevada. Um, they are three and a half years old. They have an April Fool's Day birthday. And uh, so as, as of this recording, they're actually pretty much three and a half years old, um, almost yep. to the day. Almost to the day. Yep. Uh, exactly. They are a family-run operation. If you come here, the chances are very strong. In fact, almost guaranteed that the person who will be pulling your beer or sweeping up behind you is named Love Lady. Um, that's true. They are, <laughs> that's true. They, they They're are, very hands-on. They yes. are very hands-on. Very. This is not the sort of operation where, you know, four brothers own a brewery and nobody ever shows up. Uh, this <laughs> is a deal where four brothers own a brewery and and everybody involved is uh, is part of the family in one way, shape, or form, except for Molly. And Molly, we wish you well. Yes. Uh, wherever your next venture is, she was off, uh, off she goes. Yep. She was uh, uh, a social media maven, if, if I recall correctly, for the yep. uh, brewery, and she's off somewhere. But we wish her well and. Uh, we as Creek Geeks always support um, local Geeks. breweries and yes. drinking local in Vegas Strong. And so here we are back at Love Lady and today's selection. Oh, yeah. There is going to be beer. Okay. Is the Paleo Oh, Porter. we're both showing. All right, cool. All right. My can's nicer than your can. The, the beauty of it is, yeah, uh, Jeff here at Love Lady has been extremely cool and extremely generous with us. More, more, us than, up with, uh, more than accommodating. Hooked us up with, with these cans. Real quick, I'm just going to tell you the story of this beer. Local paleontologist currently unearthing a 98 million year old plant eating dinosaur in the Valley of Fire State Park, affectionately called Pyrosaurus. Bones of this animal are some of the largest dinosaur bones to come from Nevada. The existence of Pyrosaurus spurred our imagination and led us to be blend a bold flavored American style porter with peanut butter, chocolate, and coffee. Uh, Jeff Bondi, Professor Jeff Bondi, is the one who actually is the one who discovered the Pyrosaurus uh, here in Nevada. And um, this beer was actually uh, created as, as sort of a, uh, a celebration of uh, this this dinosaur being found. As it turns out, this is not in fact a, a flagstone beer, um, in that this beer was not uh, this is not one of the first beers yeah. you would see. Um, it, it's not a flagstone because it wasn't here when they started. It is a flagship, I would go so far as to say, because at this point it is definitely one of the year-round, um, you know, yes. non non-changing. Uh, Varieties and next next week we'll be doing the Ninth Island Sour, the uh, standard one, the pineapple, but that's a changing uh, variety as well. And last week we did the evolving uh, IPA, the state of change. But uh, there's one the Paleo Porter. Got, yeah, we got a. Uh, he's wearing a, like a doctor's jacket there with a heart on, heart on it. So heart on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Some butt head time. This is described uh, by the brewers as a porter made with Cafe Feminino uh, coffee roasted at Mothership Coffee Company, chocolate and peanut butter. Local. Uh, local. Mothership Coffee is here in yep. Henderson. They are roasters. They are, uh, <clears throat> so it, it's good to see the, this is a, th this, it would be fair to say that this is a very, very Nevada beer. Um, made in celebration very... of a Nevada dinosaur. Right. Made with Nevada roasting uh, coffees. Um, and it is very beloved in, in Las Vegas, so. I have Wherever had, you go, and you you bring up Love Lady and what their beers, you know, who thinks of who thinks what about their beers? Mm -hmm. Paleo Porter gets raving, you know, just huge reviews, rave reviews. It's it's very very popular here in Vegas. Yep. I have reviewed this for, beer for sure. uh, previously on my own, um, and uh, well, I'm sorry, I forget exactly where I was headed with that. <laughs> uh, that means we go on to new uncharted territory. So. I, I guess so. Um, but I do want to say, actually, very quick, I know I was headed with it. Uh, because on this channel, we like to keep beers within the $2 price range. I can tell you safely that if you go and pay retail, uh, at least here in Nevada now, you know, by the time it goes across state lines, maybe there's a middleman who marks it up some. But this is definitely within a $2 range beer. I believe if you go and uh, at total, I either pay $2.29 total wine. or $2.49 yep. for a single can of this. So if you can get change back from $3 for a can of craft beer, you're, you're doing well. There you go. Yeah. Very popular beer here in the Valley. I, you do hear pa Paleo Porter get mentioned quite a bit when you're speaking to uh, fellow drinkers at other breweries when you are out and about and you mention, 
you know, where have you been in town and, you know, what, what it is the highly beers. recognized beer among the it Vegas craft beer It's just loved sure. and popular for sure. So mm -hmm. I'm going to crack mine open and start pouring. Let's do that. Obviously. Of course, because we're on site, we do have the Love Lady logo, which, again, I said last week, this is one of the coolest logos. I, I, I absolutely okay. love their logo. I think they have one of the coolest logos of beer. I really, really, really do. And I mean that. Now, porters, I don't drink porters very often. Um, but it seems like when I do have a porter, most always I enjoy it because I'm very picky with them. I'm extremely picky with them. So, I will say before this even really got a chance to hit the just, air boom, and do the eight, I got smacked in the nose with coffee. Uh, now, as I do pour it, yes, I smell the like peanut butter for sure. As soon as I popped this, I, it was like Reese's company just like, you know, showed up and said, yeah. you know, charge! Yeah. Such a such a rich peanut butter smell. It, it's incredible. I would, I would, Sweetness, too. I would go too. so far as to say, at least for me anyway, uh, I'm having trouble discerning which which of the three components I smell more, the chocolate, the coffee, or the peanut butter. Uh, I really smell all the way all my schnoz is working right now, I definitely got the peanut butter first. But... Smell the peanut butter and then, yeah. No, no, as, as I said, when I cracked open the can, the coffee was what hit me first. Uh, now that I've done a quick mood mm. wipe and inspect this my sauce, I'm getting a, it really is. It's, it's very, just very heavenly. heavenly smell. It, I, I've said this before, um, certain beers lend themselves to a Yankee candle. Yes. This is one yeah, of them. definitely. This, Paleo Porter should be a Yankee candle. When you pour this beer into a glass, it's it, it, you almost don't want to stop smelling it. It is so aromatic. It, it is just a beautiful beautiful smell it makes you salivate right away i mean i for one am thankful that what's actually coming through on this camera is in fact a brown tone and not just a black which oftentimes quarters come through i'm so very glad that we have enough sunlight to actually bring close to the color one of those few times when it the looks color like actually espresso. appears yeah. yeah it does it looks like a very serious coffee drink when you, when you look at the color at the color anyway. as you can see it's sort of a wispy head the head's already gone rather quickly and i've mm -hmm. barely done a swirl um not a whole lot of, would not call that high carbonation, but um, uh, that's neither here nor there. It's just, uh, Porter's not known for a high carbonation. Right. They're, they're darker beers. Yeah, you're not going to get the head of a stout. Because stouts, you know, you pour it straight down the middle, a stout will give you a nice, spongy, uh, you know, creamy head. But Would you use Tony's phrase of light cannot escape it? This is not, that's not how I would describe this beer at all. This is definitely <laughs> a brown beer. Sometimes... Those brown beers come through so dark that they almost look black. But it almost, is... it, well, color-wise, it almost resembles a uh, a flat Coca-Cola. Yeah. As far yeah. as color. But it does. But it's going to taste a lot better than a flat Coca-Cola. <laughs> well, we've been talking for almost eight minutes. Let's get to oh, drinking my... some beer. Cheers. No one has ever said that and didn't lead me to drink beer. This is awesome. This is an incredible beer. I'm going to describe that as a, probably a medium low mouth feel, not a whole lot of spikiness to it. Not particularly picking up any, um, any. Uh, I'm sorry, I spit, this, spit it out, Rouse. Any uh, alcohol burn, real quick. It does it's have tame. a 5.1 ABV on the and burn. 35 IBU, so it's not particularly alcoholic or uh, um, bitter. But just, you are tasting. I, I feel like I'm sitting next to a campfire, and people yeah. are getting ready to make some s'mores or something. It just, it's just. I know. There's no graham cracker in this, but what I'm saying is it's so toasty and, and warm and, and like almost comfort food in a way, you know? I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> it makes me think of my grandmother's kitchen at uh, Christmas. Uh, I could smell baker's chocolate. There she had go. baker's exactly. chocolate in just about everything that she made. And yep. that's what, I, I'm wondering if they didn't, in fact, use baker's chocolate for this because it has a very distinct, uh, it's not that milk chocolate that you normally smell. It's not that bittersweet chocolate from... Um, Right. From like dark chocolate, but I think they may have used Baker's chocolate for this. It's 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 like soft on the palate as far you know the, you're not getting like carbonation or fizz. It's very soft and creamy on the palate, and the flavors are just so they're just bouncing around your mouth. I mean you're you're getting it all. You are truly truly getting it all. This is a dessert beer, a warming beer, oh, yeah. very um, nice a, an I'm autumn beer, so far a very good say, autumn if beer. If you wanted to make sure. a beer float, this would be a beer. That would, would cool. yes. I could absolutely throw some vanilla ice cream in here. Yeah, and for I, sure. I would say definitely vanilla. Don't, 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 uh, you know, don't like throw sometimes people, chip. or, you know, caramel <laughs> pecan. Sometimes people like to, you know, like with, with Guinness, I've seen all kinds of strange things. Right. Uh, yeah. All strange flavors, or, you know, this is not the kind of beer that you'd want to add another flavor to, but you might want 
full of the creaminess. I could even see making this into a beer latte for the morning. Um, you know, just another shot of espresso, perhaps a little bit of black coffee and some cream half and half Hell, to go with it. I'll, I'll keep the train rolling. I could actually see putting a couple drops of this on a banana split. Yeah. Like just real subtle, just drop, mm -hmm. drop, drop. I don't know, because of the peanut butter and the, and the chocolate element to it. Yeah. I think you're it taking your hot fudge and mixing a little bit of this I, with it, or? <laughs> and then you wake up tomorrow and you're 87 pounds heavier exactly. than when you went to and a bed. Exactly, and you got diabetes. But. <laughs> <laughs> and you lost a limb. Okay, but anyway, um, back to more pleasant stuff. This is just, it's very, it's just a very thorough beer. Like, it advertises what you're going to taste and it delivers on all of them. Like, it doesn't, it, it's not weak on any of these. No, not at all. The peanut butter, the coffee, and the chocolate. You have all three. And you're gonna get them in like waves. I mean, yeah, exactly. And if I were if I were gonna go so far as to say, what well, you know, what is the flavor? If you have to pin it down, I would say it's a chocolate. I'm sorry, it's a coffee, peanut butter flavor with notes of chocolate. That's how I would actually add it. I'd it. say the chocolate kind of augments the main two flavors, which it, are peanut butter and, and uh, yeah, coffee. Yeah, it, it kind of comes on. The chocolate kind of just comes in as like a, a like a nice compliment. I personally get a little more peanut butter than than I do anything else. Um, but it's a great marriage. I, I think that's what makes this beer so great is, is you're talking about, I'm going to say it's like the most complex beer in the world because, you know, we, we've seen beers where, you know, they're talking about like adding, you know, everything but the kitchen sink. Exactly. This yeah. is simple, but at the same time complex because the flavors that are in here all come to you at different stages of each sip, you know, and that to me is a mark of a good beer. If it's on the can or on the bottle, at some point, I expect to taste it, whether it's on the tongue right away yes, or in the back. There's so many things that are, yeah, where it, like it's a lot of hazelnut beers, for example. You open it up, you smell hazelnut, you put it on your tongue, you don't taste anything in the way of hazelnut. Um, this is not the case with this. This is not one of those cases where, right. oh, my God, it smells wonderful but tastes flat or, you know, doesn't have much flavor to it at all. Uh, because that is, I have to admit, that's been very, very... Very much the case where, particularly beers with that are uh, have like three flavors or more like this, right. where you smell everything but taste nothing. Right, exactly. Um, and then sometimes the the alcohol burn drowns out maybe one or two of those mm -hmm. you know components. That's why that's why I consider this beer really really satisfying. It it's a now that we're in you know the middle of October, it really brings fall. Like it like you feel like it's autumn in a glass. This mm -hmm. tastes like autumn in a glass. Really I would does. go so far. Okay, I will say this: if you are uh, a fan of uh, darker beers, porters, stouts, brown ales, uh, you're going to like this beer. But um, I also think, and I, I always try to reference it back to would my wife drink it? And my wife can't stand beer. <laughs> uh, I think I might actually be able to convince her to at least We're watching try you, this. Nancy. You know, um, she's not a huge fan of peanut butter, but this just smells so good that I think I could convince her to at least taste Again, it. Again, it's it, it feels like a candle, like a like a soft glowing candle, but in like in drinkable form. At 5.1 ABV, it's very easy to, I mean, it you is. can have a couple of these, no problem right. whatsoever. You wouldn't, you know, this yeah. isn't like a barley wine where you're drinking a 13.8, yeah. you know, ABV. Um, so it is, it is a, basically a lager uh, level of ABV. Right. Um, I think uh, actually for porters, I mean, 5.1 is actually a little bit on the lower side because I think they come in yeah. between 5 points. I seem to remember them covering them and closer 6. to 6, 6, 6 and but yeah. Um, so this is actually a little bit, uh, a little but, less boozy than but that's a typical not porter. The, but you know that is a reason range, to like. You know, you know, I'm going to order this beer. Oh, you just served me a porter that is one percent lower than I was hoping. No, the flavor is there. It's it's what you want. It, this this is this is a home run. I think. We've got basically one minute left. Um, scores on untapped because for those people that want to participate in the untapped world. I've always dug this beer. Uh, I'm going to get. I this isn't our first time having it. I gave this a four I know I'm going to give this one a 4.25 because I made a rag in a can. Always gets that extra 0.25 from the I would agree. from me. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. And again, we do the compliment. We, we, we have to throw the untapped thing out there because there are people that want to talk about it. One of the things, I, I know we're almost out of time, but one of the things I like about this brewery, and we'll show it in the last video, is uh, part of the board actually says, Basically, turn off your phone and talk to somebody. Talk to someone next now. to you. Converse. Like 90, quit you know? playing with your phone and like you know, drink your beer and quit. Quit talking about it. Don't overanalyze. Don't overanalyze. Which your beer. is what we're doing. Hey guys, until next time, right. drink good beer. Drink Don't break good the beer. bank doing it. Thanks again, lovely. Drink Vogel slash tag Vegas Strong.